My name is Chuck Wadley. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Uh, I'm a retired police officer, 23 years of service. Uh, my buddy and I, we came to Cuenca to, just to check it out. We heard a lot about it and wanted to find out for ourselves what it was like. So you're, you're considering actually moving here or living here? Or what's your plan? Well, I, I, my plan is actually to, to live here part-time, maybe a, <clears throat> excuse me, about like a month at a time. Um, Spend part of my time in the States and then part of my time here in, in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. and, uh, how did you hear about uh, Cuenca and, and uh, what motivated you to actually come here? Well, I've been coming to Ecuador for about four years. Usually I stay in Waikil and uh, me and my friends, we go deep sea fishing over in Salinas. And uh, we'd heard about uh, Cuenca through some of our friends. And the uh, last couple of years we talked about it. It's not exactly an easy place to get to. You just don't, uh -huh. just don't get here. Uh, but this trip, we decided to, to go ahead and carve out the time and, uh, and come here. And, and this is more kind of a recon mission for us, just to see what, what's here in Cuenca and if we would like it. And so far, we've been pretty impressed with it. Um, are you married, single? What's your I, I am single. And do you have uh, children? That, uh, uh, I, I do not have any children. Okay, so you're not currently married, don't have children. Uh, and so you're pretty free to do whatever you want at this point. And, yeah, and pretty much. all the places in the world, this is uh, one of the places that you're choosing to, to be. Yes, sir. Um, are you still working or are you retired? Or? Well, I, uh, I'm a retired police officer, like I said, but uh, I also do volunteer work with the same police department I retired from. Uh -huh. So, uh, But it's a flexible schedule since I'm a volunteer, so I can I can work when I want to work or or not. Yeah, sounds like a pretty good situation. It's not bad. <laughs> Gives you a lot of freedom. Um, and have you lived overseas before? I mean, actually lived overseas? Or, uh, yes, I have. Uh, care of the United States Army. Uh -huh. Where were you? Uh, I fought in the first Gulf War, so I spent time okay. in Saudi Arabia and Iraq. Okay, my favorite places. I lived in Saudi Arabia for three years. The sandbox, so. yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so, um, what's prompting you to, to leave the United States or to live abroad primarily? Uh, you're still a U.S. citizen, I'm assuming. Correct. You plan to not give up your citizenship. No. <laughs> uh, what about getting dual citizenship? Have you? No. Um, you know, that's never really entered my mind. I uh -huh. uh, I like to travel. I've always liked to travel. Um, and, and Ecuador is a good fit. Uh, the people are friendly. Um, the government's, as far as I can tell, has been fairly friendly. Uh -huh. uh, there are different experiences, life experiences that you can enjoy here. Uh, the things I like to do, traveling, camping, fishing, you can pretty much do in Ecuador for a lot less than you can do it in the United States. And uh, probably less crowded. <laughs> well, if you get outside the cities, definitely less crowded. Uh -huh. So what kind of challenges do you see uh, expatriates facing, you know, living overseas? I mean, are you concerned about anything? Uh, what do you think will well, be and this is just, challenges for you? Well, and this is just my personal opinion. It, it, it's the language barrier, um, by far. Um, we get a little spoiled in the States, speaking uh, English as primary language. We, we start to think that everybody speaks English, even tourists that come from other countries that come to the United States usually have a <clears throat> excuse me, usually have a pretty good grasp of English. When you come to a place like Ecuador, it's it's different. Um, you're you're not gonna find a, a lot of people who can, can speak English. So you really have to have it, it, you don't have to be fluent in Spanish, but at least have a you know a, a kind of a working knowledge of it, a, a comfort with it. Uh, you know, get your, uh, your your books or or like for me I like to study uh, Rosetta Stone. Uh -huh. um, to help me along, but that I'd say that'd be the biggest challenge. Yeah, one of the things that some of the other people have pointed out is that there seem to be two groups of uh, people coming here now. Some come with the idea that uh, you know they want to recreate America here at a cheap price, and, uh, and so they want everything to be done for them, uh, you know, as though they were in America. And others, uh, you know, really here is more to try to be more global citizens and learn about. Uh, uh, other cultures and other ways of living and and some of the hardest challenges for those uh, who have been here a long time was uh, getting around to really just accepting the local culture. <laughs> what do you think about that? Uh, well, I, I mean, it makes sense. I'd like to think of myself as the latter. Uh -huh. um, I, I want to experience the local culture. I mean, if I wanted America, I would have stayed in America. <laughs> and you And you have to understand that 
you're in somebody else's country, you're in somebody else's house, and just to be a, you know, a good guest, you have to accept that. I think you're cheating yourself if you just if you come here and, and isolate yourself with you know f with people from whatever country you're from, whether it's America or Europe. Only expats. Yeah, I you know I have no problem with uh, being among people uh, from my own culture, but at the same time I also want to um, experience the the culture in the country that I'm in. Okay. Yeah. What do you think is the best thing about uh, living in another country? For me, it's it's the challenge. Every day is a challenge. Um, just to go to the market to get something, you know, you have to you have to transition yourself into that culture. You just can't walk up to somebody and say, you know, give me a kilo of coffee. They're they're going to go <laughs> gay. Um, and just to interact with them. And, and like I said, the, the, the ones that we've met have been very very friendly. It sounds like you see it as a, an opportunity for continuing lifelong learning experience, which is uh, what education is all about. Isn't it? I would agree with that statement. So, um, do you have a, a, a story or an episode that illustrates uh, you know, maybe one of the best experiences that you've had since you've been here? Um, wow, I have to think about that. Well, I would say, and, and Al can back me up on this, is... Uh, one of our trips here, I think it was uh, the first trip I was here, we went deep sea fishing out of Salinas. Uh -huh. And I'm an avid fisherman, love to fish. <laughs> and uh, we'd been trolling all morning, and we finally got a hit. And I wound up, uh, I don't know, it took probably about half an hour, but I brought in a 60 pound Wahoo. <laughs> and uh, That's a big fish. Yeah, they're, they do things a little bit differently here. PETA would probably have a heart attack, but uh, I brought that Wahoo in. And uh, like a fishing boat in the States, they would have dispatched it somewhat quickly. Um, yeah. Here, they, they plunged it to death, which was, was uh, kind of a shock. But uh, we came back in. The captain called a local restaurant. They sent a runner down, collected our fish, and an hour later, we were they <laughs> at the cleaned it and cooked it for us. <laughs> and it was delicious. That's great. And it was probably done uh, at a reasonable cost, too. Huh? Very reasonable. Very reasonable. <laughs> So, um, what kinds of preparation or orientation did you have before, you know, coming here and, and wanting to spend time here? For me, it was uh, my friends that have been here before and um, a Lonely Planets guidebook. <laughs> and you have been studying little Spanish, I guess, so. Yes. Um, do you have any advice for other American expatriates who would consider moving overseas or especially to Princeton or to Ecuador? Really, uh, just to keep an open mind, um, just realize that you're, yes, you're an American, but you're not in the United States anymore. You're in another country, another culture, and things are going to be different. Um, something as simple as, like if you go to a restaurant in the States, you're used to a, a certain level of service. Well, you might not get that level of service here, but that's just the, the way it is, you, and you have to accept that, and don't be irritated by it. Accept that it's being part of the culture and part of the experience. Right, right? correct. And you're on a different time frame when you're here, too, not on the American timetable. Uh, there, there are times where I, I have to look at my watch just to figure out what day it is. So. <laughs> uh, anything else that you'd like to comment on related to the experience or your hopes for living abroad? Well, everybody's experience is going to be different. Um, I can only say that, that mine has been really positive, and I hope anybody that's planning on, on coming over here would have the same idea, the same philosophy. Well, good luck to you in your uh, presentation to Ecuador, and that, uh, thanks for sharing your story. I'm sure other people will appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Thank you.